I'm Ellen McCauley. I'm at Preda in Syracuse, New York. Uh, behind the food log isn't really a prayer, but I read it and I, I wanted to include it in the meeting. And um, we talked a lot about overcoming our our anxiety and our stress, and, and sometimes we have so much guilt and shame. And when I read this, I absolutely loved it. James Bryan Smith is a Christian writer, and he says this, God expects more failure from us than we do from ourselves, because God knows who we are. We are not the righteous person who occasionally sins. We are the sinful person who occasionally, by God's grace, gets it right. When we start from, the perspective, from this perspective, we are released from the bondage of perfectionism and are able to forgive ourselves once and for all. We are to take our cue from him. We may be disappointed with ourselves, but God is not. We may feel like condemning ourselves, but God does not. I loved that. And you know what else is interesting is life itself. I'm 63 years old, and I told you that I struggle with a lot of the mistakes I've made in my life. And, and after I read this, and after I really thought about a lot of this this week, Alan McCauley, who exists today on uh, October 12, 2017, would not have made those same mistakes. I wouldn't have committed the same <coughs> sins. I like to think I've been on a journey of knowledge and faith, so I have to forgive myself. I didn't have all that knowledge. I didn't have all that faith. I mean, whoever heard the phrase, young and foolish? I mean, they say that for a reason. So this Ellen has to say, I forgive you, old Ellen, who was young, who, who was, you know, made mistakes, who, who was uh, this or that, and, and then we need to go forward. And um, one thing I didn't mention about John chapter 21, did Jesus pick the most perfect person in the world to be the rock, the man he gave the keys to the kingdom? He gave them to Peter. Peter denied him three times. Did Jesus say, yo, yo, Peter, I was going to give you the keys to the kingdom, but you denied me, so get out. He knew Peter better than Peter knew himself. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows that we're struggling with our weight. He's there to help us. And you know, one of the things I really hear every week at the scale is a lot of negativity. I say to people, how are you? And they go, well, let me weigh in, then I'll tell you how I am. <laughs> or they'll say, I had a bad week. Now then I say bad week food wise, bad week life wise, and then <coughs> some people say what's the difference? Interesting that we equate bad food week with bad life week. Can we have a bad life week and eat healthy? We can. Do we? Not always. And we're talking about things like that every week. We're going to talk about dealing with negative emotions. Then we're going to talk about dealing with negative self-talk. And then we're going to talk about eating healthy on a budget because several people said to me, I can't afford to eat healthy. And we're going to talk about that tonight. So the first topic is this. Emotions have a large impact on the quality of life that we lead. And the first thing is we label emotions. We say, I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm anxious, I'm, I'm worried. Do those sound like positive emotions to you? Don't they say, I'm anxious, I'm angry, I'm worried, and I'm stressed. And we label them. And then we have an illusion that we have no control over them. You know, someone cuts you off in traffic, you almost hit them. You know, you're, you're angry, so you start screaming, because it's not your fault. They cut you off. <coughs> There's anger, which you might be, whoa, that was crazy. Why did they do that? Why did they cut me off? And then you deal with it by going, thank, thank you, Jesus, that I didn't hit him. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm okay. Please help that other driver, because something's going on in their life, and, and I really think they need your help, Jesus. Help them. We have control over how we deal with them. And you know what I found interesting? And I wrote it down of something else I read. 
An emotion isn't dangerous until it is projected on another or into your own flesh. Think about that. How many times have you had a bad day at work and you come home and your beloved Bob says, Hi, honey, how was your day? And I'm like, Get away from me! Blah, 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 blah! And how dare you? And Mom, what do you mean, how was my day? Uh, one time I asked my mother, I called her up and said, Mom, how are you? She goes, Why do you always ask me that? Why do you always say, How are you? And she started mocking me. And I'm thinking, Uh oh, uh oh, bad day, bad day. And then who was the recipient? Me. Have you ever, is anyone, you don't have to raise your hand, but think, have you ever lashed out at anyone else because you were thinking of a negative emotion, perhaps? Also, the next part, you compress it into your own flesh. You're at work, some, you know, you think, oh, I'm going to get this promotion because I work so hard, I try so hard. And then somebody who's the brother-in-law, sister-in-law of the friend of this, they go, hey, I'd like to bring in this 19-year-old, uh, and I know that you've been here 30 years, but they're going to be the new supervisor. And then you're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and you suppress, 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 and, and then you go, I'm not going to think about this, you know, where's the donuts, where's the candy, get me the, get me the food. So you either lash out, you compress into your own flesh. Think about how to deal with that. Do we have no control? Do we have to cry, bang our heads on the wall, just because we feel angry? Do we have to? And you know, sometimes when one of your kids or whatever, like you, you give money to your son and you say, really watch that money, really watch that money, really watch that money, and then the next week it's all gone, and you're like, what did you do with the money? You know, and then there's a tendency where you want to go, I worked so hard for that money, and you wasted it, you're never getting money again, instead of having a, a, a mature dialogue. Also, we either deal with things inappropriately, but sometimes we avoid it or we deny it. We just say, uh, I like losing weight. Uh, I'm not even going to try because in order to be not disappointed, I'm not going to try it all. You say, I have lost weight a million times. I've always gained it back. So why bother? Why try? Why bother? Why try? And, and you start telling yourself these things instead of saying, you know, I have had a lot of diet failures. I have tried to lose weight many times in my life. I'm praying. I'm praying that this time will be different. I'm praying that I'll learn something new. Because if we don't deal with the issues that brought us here, we'll have to deal with them again someday over something else. You've got to deal with things once and for all. We have to understand the message of the emotion. Understand what it is. If someone cuts you off in traffic, there's so much road rage in America, in the world. People kill each other over road rage. Uh, who ever read a story about someone killing someone over a traffic road rage? We all have. Is that worth it or is there other things people are dealing with that I have to honestly say I have zero, zip, no road rage at all. Someone cuts me off. Like coming home from work every day is like like the Indy 500. I'm like, whoa, where do they go? Whoa, 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 whoa. You know? And I'm like, I'm going to get killed. No, I'm not. Lord Jesus, I love you. And I never get mad about it, but I'm thinking, there are people who would be so angry right now, who would be so stressed, and I thank God that that's not one of my issues. One of the things also is we need to deal with these emotions. And one of the things we can do is interrupt ourselves. It's like you go, oh, this is a, like with Bob. Uh, like, Bob, uh, just a teeny bit, a teeny bit of, oh my gosh, why did that guy cut us off? And then I put my hand on his leg. <laughs> and when I put my hand on his leg, that's his interruption, and he'll go, you know, he'll know. But if I'm not in the car, I don't know what he does. It's probably, it's probably something really, really bad. You don't want to know. Yeah, I don't want to know. <laughs> but we need to interrupt ourselves and say things like, will this matter tomorrow? Will I remember this a year from now? What is the anger going to, how's the anger going to help me? Or you say to yourself, all right, the 19-year-old got promoted over me. I really deserve this job. But is there anything I could have done differently? I mean, there is politics. There's things that happen. If you internalize it, you have to think about it. Here's a 
list of negative emotions and the meanings. Fear. Fear, now remember what I said, our bodies are cavemen thinking we're going to fight a dinosaur. So a lot of our fear over things that, like you might say, Kathy might say, oh, I'm a little afraid I've got to give a, a talk at Pray It Often. Did you have a little fear? So what did she do? She prepared. She thought about what she was going to say. She wrote it down because she said, I might get too emotional. I might get too nervous. I might not say what I want to say. So she did a word that I think is huge. She prepared. Did it help you to be prepared? Yeah. Yes. And then you prepare as best you can, and then you sit back and have faith. Hurt. So often we're hurt, and we eat over it, and we could have misinterpreted the situation. How many times is someone that you were like, one time Bob was in, in the grocery store, and he came home, and he goes, I saw this guy I know, and he completely ignored me. He walked right by me. And then I said, well, Maybe he didn't see you. You know, maybe maybe he didn't, didn't see you. He goes, why are you saying that? Of course he saw me. Of course he just ignored me. And so then I'm thinking, um, how often do we do that? Maybe he didn't see him. And if he did ignore him, let it go. I, what are we going to do about it? It happened before, but I'm glad he told me. That's another way to do it. You diffuse it. And I, then I say, because I love him so much, well, the, that's his problem, honey, because you're awesome and wonderful. And if he ignores you, it's got to be his own problem. Because who'll ignore you? You're wonderful. Uh, and he's like, well, a little view. And then he gives me a hug. So you diffuse the situation. When you're frustrated, it means you feel like you're not getting the returns for your efforts. And you feel that you could be doing better than you currently are. There's a lot of people in this room that are frustrated with their weight loss journey. And I say to them, we can do a number of things. We can quit and give up, which how many times have we done that in our lives? Or we can say, maybe I should try another strategy. Maybe I should listen to the presentations. Maybe I'm not dealing with this. Maybe there's this going on. But being frustrated and eating over it, like I'm not losing weight, so I'm going to eat. I mean, does that make sense? You know, I mean, really when we think about it. Disappointed. When you're disappointed in life, we need to take stock of where we are and know that we're guided and protected by God. That everything happens for a reason. So trust that what happened is the best option in the long-term plan for your life. I had my own internet business. I had three teenagers and a baby. I started my own internet business because it was just too crazy to be in a high-pressure sales job and, and have all those darn kids. So it was going along, going along, going along, going along. And one of my greatest fears, which I thought about all the time, which I probably manifested it in the world, was to get audited by the IRS. So one day I willy-nilly go out to the mailbox and I open the mailbox and I see an envelope, a huge thick one from the IRS and I turn my eyes to heaven and I went, no! I thought it was the worst time of my life. I can't tell you how much work I had to do. It's a huge long story. The, the bottom line is I didn't have to pay a cent. I didn't do anything wrong. But they said to me, you're not making enough money to call this a business. And I'm thinking, General Motors goes bankrupt all the time. They're still calling it a business. You know, why, why can't I? <laughs> At that point, I knew I had to get another real job again. I, from 2009 to now, I'm working for the county. I have great benefits. I love what I'm doing. I'm helping people. I can get a retirement in five more years. I can get medical benefits. God knew what he was doing. Because if I hadn't have gotten out in front of the IRS, I wasn't making enough money. I wasn't going to have a pension and medical benefits. So I thank God for that. Sometimes when things happen and you think it's the worst, it's the best. What about some of the boyfriends that broke up with you in high school? And you're like, oh, if God, if you love me, you'd make Grant Carpenter love me. Why doesn't he love me? And then you realize, well, what? Not you, Grant, because I still love you. Not, not in more than you, Bob. But if there, is someone, if there is someone in your life, then you think, oh, remember how heartbroken I was? And then you're like, there's a song, a country western song, Thank God for Unanswered Prayers. God knows what he's doing. Every one of us has our own set of values and standards. And if we hold, I cannot stand littering. 
I can't stand littering. If I'm driving behind someone and someone throws a whole Happy Meal bag and wrapper and things out the window, that tends to raise my Irish. I'm thinking, the environment, why, why are they doing that? And then I say, I'm not mad about road rage, but I don't like littering. I don't like it when someone at work, when there's a, a big thing that says paper and a big thing that says garbage, and someone walks by and puts the newspaper in the garbage. So I had to deal with those. I would get mad and think, what, what, how hard is it? You recycle. We're in a recycling town. So now I pray for the person and Lord Jesus, help them to learn to recycle. I go to the garbage, I take the paper, and I put it in the paper recycling bag. And then the person who litters in front of me, I go, Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do. Help them. But you can't get upset about it because I have my own standards. I think you shouldn't litter. And you know what? I think sometimes my own standards are right, but I don't think you should. I think you should recycle. We need to be careful when we put our own judgments on other people. I'm going to stop right there, Bob. <laughs>